we're gonna be done and then we don't have to film any more what solds until the next one <laughs> YouTube. Welcome back to the Every Closet channel. My name is Stephanie and along with my partner Ethan, we are two full-time resellers on apps like Poshmark and eBay of used clothing. So thank you guys so much for being here again. Hit subscribe if you like reseller content and let's get into today's video. I literally just finished filming um, the What Sold video for March 8th to 15th. So now let's go into the week that immediately followed that which is March, 6th, March 16th to 23rd. Today is the 24th. I'm a little behind. We're gonna go over everything that's sold in that week and then we'll go over the totals and hopefully we'll all learn what kind of things we should or should not be picking up from this list. So I'm gonna start with the US closet now cause I'm holding it here and we're gonna go right where we left off. So the next sale, which was on March 16th, was a Roberto Cavalli animal print mix print maxi dress gown. Um, this was amazing. It had its Roberto Cavalli tag in the back of the neck cut out, but whenever something's cut out like that, and you could kind of tell that this was nice and it was silk, but when it, whenever the back of the neck tag is cut out, I always check the fabric tag and I was so happy I did because it had the Roberto Cavalli like reflective little thing that you know means it's authentic. And so Value Village didn't catch this dress, didn't know it was expensive. Um, this would have retailed for like two or three thousand dollars. <laughs> and they had it priced at eight dollars and it got it at the 50% off sale. So this was four dollars to me. It sold, um, but it was altered. Someone added a bit more, like the V-neck was really deep V. Someone had clearly, not Roberto Cavalli, added a bit more to the V-neck to make it a bit more like, you know, covering. And so I just disclosed that in the listing and it sold for 75 US dollars, giving us 60 US dollars in profit or around a, a probably $70, $65 Canadian profit, which is a great profit. Uh, yeah, it, it was an amazing dress that would have retailed for so much, but then someone altered it and then, you know, it's, there's a lot of factors here, but I was happy with that flip, especially because we paid $4. Next was a pair of Mephisto Emily walking flats in a tan snakeskin in a size 8.5. Mephisto is a great, I think it's Italian, but I'm not, I don't know. I know it's a great bolo brand. Um, these sold for 60 US dollars, giving us 48 US dollars. And we bought these for $11 at Value Village. So that was a fantastic flip, just about a 45, 50, I don't know, dollar flip in Canadian dollars. Next was a mini Bowden hooded and cable knit off white uh, cardigan button sweater, uh, mini Bowden, so kids. It was in a size 10 for girls. And um, I picked this up at the thrift store in Whistler, but it actually ended up having a stain that I couldn't get out on the elbow. So this would have sold for more and it still got quite a bit of attention, but it sold for 12 US dollars, giving us nine US dollars in profit. It was only $3 to us at that Whistler thrift store, but yeah, not the biggest profit. I'm just happy that I missed a stain and it didn't cost me money. You know, that's, that's the ideal. Next was a pair of Nike Air Jordan black and red gym shorts in a size large. These um, were Air Jordans, so I listed them, but they had a few pulls, so I listed them lower. Um, someone offered $16 for them, giving us $12.80 in US dollars in profit. They came from a $10 bag, so that would have been a great profit. <laughs> Next was a pair of coach purses. Well, a a coach purse with a little mini pouch inside of it. It's a coach black signature weekender pack and go uh, nylon tote bag that ha comes with another little bag inside of it. This sold for 60 US dollars, giving us 48 US dollars to split with our consignment client, the one that gave us all the coach bags. So amazing, she's amazing. And we're happy with that sale. Next was a purse of hers that was brandless, but it still sold for good because it was a camel brown leather handbag. 
it was a pretty substantial like big square shaped tote bag and it was in a nice like brown leather so it didn't have any branding information on it whatsoever but it still sold for 29 us dollars giving us 23 dollars and 20 cents in us dollars to split with that same consignment client next was a victoria's secret pink sheer lace chemise at a size large this was super cute it sold for 22 us dollars uh, giving us 18 mm, yeah around 18 or 19 canadian dollars um that was from a ten dollar bag so good profit on that one next was something that took forever to sell for some reason a juicy couture black velour short sleeve uh jacket in a size extra small maybe that's why but and because i didn't have matching pants but it sold for 12 us dollars giving us 7.33 in us dollars so like nine bucks um this came from a ten dollar bag so i'm fine with that profit it's just that i was confused because i might have sourced that and it would have been a terrible idea so maybe hold off on the juicy couture velour items unless you have a set sets do great um, individual pieces, not as well. Next was a new tag Zara black high rise leggings with gold like buttons on the front side. This came to us from our consignment client. Um, the other one, we're, I, I can't keep track of who's who and not say their names. So a consignment client, <laughs> um, this sold for 30 us dollars, giving us 24 us dollars to split in half with her. Next, another consignment item, a Thomas Sabo Sapphire Crystal Women's Watch. This was a really gorgeous watch and it would have retailed for a ton. It also had a dead battery though, so that I wasn't willing to like try and fix that. So I just disclosed it and it sold for 45 US dollars, giving us $36 US to split with our consignment client. Next, we've made a horrible mistake. We sold a Lacoste gray tank top sleeveless button like vest thing and we just got a case on it this morning saying that we sent her the wrong item and she showed us the tag and it was something else and i feel so bad and it went to the us too so she's just gonna have to keep that and when you're doing a lot of sales a few of them are gonna go wrong and it's been a really long time since we did that so I feel, I feel like we were due, but that, that sucked because that was a $25 US sale. And we got that Lacoste thing for free. So we do still have it though, because we sent her something else. So we still have that Lacoste thing. She might want it. I sell it to her again. Um, I'm going to tell Posh, yes, yeah, just refund her money. Let her keep the thing that we gave her. So sorry about that. And mistakes happen. And that's part of any business. Next was a Zara black sleeveless fit and flare taffeta balloon skirt ruched waist dress in size large. Um, this came to us through a $10 bag. It was really bulky, so I was this close to just getting rid of it, but it was pretty nice. And so it sold for 18 US dollars, giving us 14.40, would have cost us around a dollar. And I was so happy to see it go because of how bulky it was. Mm, next was a Lululemon City Adventure backpack in tie dye blue. This was like nearly new. It sold for 76 US dollars. So many people sent me low offers on this and I was like, no, I know what I have. Um, yeah, so it sold for 76 US dollars, giving us 5908 US dollars to split with our consignment client who gave us a bunch of awesome bags. Next was a little bundle of things that have been in the closet forever. It was a Joffrey Bean purple classic fit dress shirt and a Polo Ralph Lauren lavender button-down dress shirt, men's both size 14 and a half in the neck. Um, this bundle sold for $20, giving us 16 US dollars, which is great, because those would have been either free or $10 bag items. So happy to get rid of them, happy to out of the closet. Next was a bundle of two coach purses, almost the same, like very similar purchase. It was an Ava taupe cross grain leather, in like a light, I think they called it vintage pink was the shade, and then a slightly darker, slightly smaller coach bag, um, also cross grain leather, also basically that like coral shade. Um, and so this person bought both of those for 180 US dollars. 
So that gives us 144 US dollars to split with our consignment client. I'm so excited about that one. Next, yeah, we had some good sales here. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> Next was a Parada Tessuto pouchette in a nylon mini purse. Um, this was an authentic Prada bag. This came to us from a consignment client. Not one of the two I usually talk about, a different one. Um, this was one of the first of her items to sell. I'm so pleased it did. Um, I messaged her right before I accepted this offer because I was like, okay, this is Prada. I'm not super experienced in this. Would you accept this amount? And she said, yes, go for it. So I accepted it. It sold for 325 US dollars. Um, I would have held out for more if it wasn't a nylon like tiny nylon bag like you had to hold this thing to understand that yes it was Prada but it wasn't like a substantial Prada bag does that make sense I believe you can get at least 500 for most Prada bags but I was happy very happy with 325 US dollars giving us 260 US dollars so around 300 or something to split with that consignment client so she was happy I was happy probably the person who bought it's happy and we're our all very pleased with that. Next was a Burberry Brit blue checkered heathered plaid shirt t-shirt and it's size small. We got this from Value Village. Um, they had it behind their counter clearly and then they had to lower it and lower it and lower it and it was put back out on the regular floor for only $20. Awesome! It sold for 60 US dollars giving us a 48 US dollar profit or like a $40 profit on that one shirt. So pleased with that. Um, yeah, getting, I'm getting a little bit familiar with Burberry, which is not something I ever thought I'd say in my life. Next was a pair of O'Neill pastel pink drawstring sweatpants. These have been in our death pile forever. I'm so sorry. Um, they came from a $10 bag. They sold for 15 US dollars, giving us 10 US dollars in profit. And we are very happy with that because of the $10 bag. And they haven't been delivered yet though, so hopefully she likes them. Next. Okay, one of our consignment clients get texted me. She's texted me sometimes and said, do you take these things? And we, we usually say no to anything but clothes. But she said, do you take Sid Dickens' memory blocks? And I was like, I'm going to look that up. I've never heard of that in my life. Do her gold mine. They're like little things you hang on the wall. They're made in Vancouver, so it didn't surprise me that she had them. Um, they're very famous, like, house decor items, and they sell for more than they retail for. So they all retail for 121 Canadian dollars here in Vancouver, and I sold this one for 140 US um, because it's a retired style and you can't buy it anymore. So uh, it was the Compassion Tile has like a heart and the cross is authentic said Dickens. Let's see what collection is this from? It was from the 2014 collection and retired in 2017. It was from the Spring Joie de Vivre collection. Um, if that means anything to you, uh, if you are ever in the decor section of your thrift store and you see Sid Dickens signature, Actually, Ethan, could you pop up the back of the tile that has Sid Dickens' signature on the back? And it's got like a crown and a Sid Dickens emblem and then he signs it and he puts the date. That is worth money. Pick that up at your thrift store. Huge bolo for home decor items. Um, yeah, so from that, we made 109 US dollars, still over 120 Canadian. And we were splitting that with our consignment client who was just so lovely to own those and then give them to us. Next was a pair of Kate Spade ballet flats, um, cream and black rounded toe ballet flats with gold like bow tie going through them. They were cute. They were in a size 10 and they sold for 49 US dollars. We got those at a consignment store for $15, um, probably around September. And so we made 37.48 US or 25-ish Canadian profit. I'm bad at math. I'm just guessing. Let's see here. A few more sales. Next was a Coach Black Sea Signature Logo Zipper Pillbox. 
Um, this was a well-worn little pillbox, so I only listed it for around $15, I believe. Um, and someone offered 10, I accepted that. So we made seven US dollars and we'll be splitting that with the consignment client that gives us all the coach. Next was a Lululemon charcoal gray skort in a size four. I couldn't find the style, but it's still sold for 20 US dollars, giving us 16 US dollars to split with the other consignment client. So very happy about that. Next was a thing I this close to not listing and I'm surprised I did, but I guess it was because they were an extra large. They were navy blue, brandless, stretchy, comfortable dress pants in a size extra large. Um, I can't believe I listed brandless dress pants, but they sold for 12 US dollars, giving us seven US dollars, which is amazing because those were either free or from a $10 bag. So sure, happy about that. And the last sale of this March 16th to 23rd period was another of the Sid Dickens tiles. So that gives us, yes, this Sid Dickens tile was the Versailles, Versailles, how do you even say that? Versailles? Yeah, that's how you say it. Versailles tulip red ceramic tile. Um, I don't know why I'm looking up the collection for you, but I wrote it, so I'm gonna, it was tile number 145, from spring 2004. So this one sold for 153. That's my favorite number, by the way. Um, American dollars giving us 122 American dollars, a dollar over what it costs to get these in Canadian. Um, and I will be splitting that with that same consignment client who gave us all the Sid Dickens styles. We have quite a few more for sale, which is amazing. Yes, so I think I just missed something, hang on way back at the beginning, because I have a different thing written here. Where did that sale go on my phone? Poshmark's been a little buggy lately, like Closet Insight's been buggy. Um, the sale with the two coach purses was the sale that did not count on Closet Insights for me this week, so that was really weird. Um, now I'm not finding this Wind River jacket sale that shows when I look at Posh on the computer and it isn't on my phone. So yeah, I have, I have a lot of questions about what's going on. I think since they re-released the like algorithm update, it really seems buggy to me. Like a lot of things on Posh are really glitching or not showing up or not displaying right. It's um frustrating. Anyway, in US dollars during that period, we thus sold 1,182 US dollars. Conversion rate that up, that is 1,477 um, Canadian dollars. Then we had that case though, but I estimated around $1,400 US from that period, Canadian dollars from the US closet in that period. Oh, it all gets so complicated and I get very confused. <laughs> so that is what sold in the US closet. Let's go over what sold in the Canadian closet. And then we can all stop having this very long conversation that you will mercifully get split in two and I have not. The first thing that sold on the Canadian closet was a New Tags Simone red floral fitted midi dress in a size 12, a the Wishbone Collection black poly something shoes in a size 6, and a Ronnie Nicole red midi rose cinch draped dress in a size 12 petite. These all sold for a bundle price of $125 giving us $98.75. The wishbone shoes were from one consignment client and the Simone red dress was from the other. So we'll be splitting that up with a bunch of math, but half of that profit goes to us. So that's lovely. Next it was an awesome sale. We sold the Nua Tags Caldo 480 black ankle Kyle boots. These, the tag on these said $655. So I had to pick them up for the, at the consignment store for I believe $57, um, which ended up giving us around pretty much doubling our money because we got uh, 150 Canadian for them and we made 118.50 in our earnings. So that basically doubled our money. And I'm really pleased with that whip. Um, called uh, might be a bolo, but like that was new with tags and the tag said $650. So you want to be careful paying up for that. That just worked out for me because of how low the consignment store price does that. But yeah, just 
it's it's a newer brand. It's it's up in the air how much of a bolo it is, but it does retail for a frick ton. Next was a Riemann's white button down colored sleeveless shirt in a size medium. This sold for $10, giving us $5.85. That's exactly what I expect from a Reitman's shirt. This was from a consignment client though, who gave us a bunch of bunch of stuff. So we will be splitting that with her. And yeah, normally I, I don't know if I would have posted that, honestly, if I'd gotten that in a $10 bag. But this is the same consignment client that got us all these coach bags and Lululemon and lots of stuff like that. So like, I do not, I do not feel any type of way except positive about listing the like Reitman shirts and things like that. Next was a Guess Green abstract print button down shirt in a men's size medium. This sold for $15, giving us $10.85. And this came from a $10 bag quite a while ago. So Guess men's shirts do not pick them up at Value Village. Do not even really pick them up at the bins. But if you own one, list it, make something. Next was an Adidas NMD R2 men's Tigo, Tiger Camo orange and black print, uh, size eight NMDs. These took a while to sell, I think, cause they're a men's size eight and that's a pretty small size for men's shoes, but they did sell for $67, giving us a profit or in our earnings of $52.93. And we paid $20 for these at a consignment store because they were Adidas NMDs in excellent condition. So NMDs, and Ultra Boosts. I would feel comfortable paying up to $20 for those every time, so long as the condition's great, so long as they're not an obtrusive size, like a men, a men's seven would have been a no from me. Uh, women's five, five and a half, not six. Five or five and a half would have been a no from me. If it had cost a little bit more, that would have been a no. Like it's just on the edge, but that was a great flip for us. Next was a Known Supply Lake Blue Weekender duffel bag. This came in a cause box. Um, I found out when I looked it up and it sold for $25, which is pretty good for an item that came in a subscription box. And our earnings are $19.75 and that will be split with our consignment client. Next was a Desidual Damon, Damon? Sheer sleeve abstract print shirt in a size small. This came to us from a $10 bag, which was fantastic because I love Desidual and it sold for $21, giving us $16.59 in our earnings. So around 15 bucks a profit. Love that. That's all I ever want from $10 bag items. Next was what I would call an anti-bolo. <laughs> These have been listed for over a year. These are Allen Edmonds Oxford Leather Bel Air men's dress shoes in a size 10 and a half. Great size, great retail. Ooh, the resale is not there for Allen Edmonds. So we got these for $12 at a consignment store or no, at a thrift store a very long time ago. This is one of the first things we got for our closet. And we thought $12 for Allen Edmonds. They retail for $550. So there should be some room in there for us to make a good profit, right? But no. No one wants other people's Allen Edmonds. I don't know what it is about them. Ethan said something about they kind of form to your foot and so you don't want someone else, you don't want used ones. I don't care. All I know is I don't pick up Allen Edmonds anymore. I was really happy to see these go. They sold for $45, giving us $35.55. So yes, we still made a $20 profit off them, but for how long I had to store those things, not a good flip in my opinion. Next. It was an exhilaration patchwork multicolored rayon uh, surplus neck neckline dress in a size large. This came to us from a ten dollar bag. It sold for fifteen dollars, which is the most I would expect from exhilaration, um, and we get ten dollars and eighty five cents from that. So fantastic. Next was a Aritzia community with cashmere heathered tan sweater in an extra extra small. So it was made with cashmere, but it was an extra, extra small. So it sold for $22, giving us $17.38. And I'm happy with that because it came to us from a $10 bag. Um, I will never donate anything that says cashmere on it that comes to us for free or from a $10 bag. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Next was a James Purse pleated smocked burgundy dress in a size small, a Lucky Brand blue chevron cocoon knit long cardigan 
and a Kismet, which is bootlegger if you're Canadian. Canada themed printed red v neck shirt. Um, that Canada shirt was from my own closet. It's been listed for a year. Bootlegger items do not do well on the resale market unless they happen to be trendy or awesome. Um, so that's that a long time. And then the Lucky brand of the James Purse dress we thrifted. Um, this bundle sold for $90 and giving us $71.10. I believe the James Purse dress was $12 and the Lucky brand cardigan was $8. So that means we would have made around a $50 profit on this bundle, which I'm very happy with. Uh, especially since they took that Kismet shirt away from me, which I was very happy with that as well. Next was a Gibbons Apre Lager black nylon hooded jacket. It says, always a good time on the front. Um, I almost didn't list this. I didn't think anyone would want this. It's very clearly from a specific like pub or something, but it sold for $18, so okay. Um, with a shipping discount though, so we made $10 from that and we'll be splitting that with a consignment client. So that was a pretty good flip in my opinion for something that's so specific. Next, with a pair of golden peach square hoop earrings. These are not nice earrings. These are earrings from icing or something like that. They sold for $8 though, which is amazing that someone gave us $8 for these. And so we make $3.85. They came in a $10 bag. Um, that bag probably had a bunch of stuff that has sold now because it came with a bunch of jewelry. So I'm considering those free. Oh, I need to take a break. This starts my voice. Water? Okay, we're almost there. It's not that I'm like filming. It's just that my voice hurts at this point. Okay. Next was a pair of Bernie Mev New York, which is not a polo and not something I'd heard of before owning them. Women's Ingrid, Ingrid Slope sneakers in a size nine and a half. These sold for $21. They came to us in a $10 bag and we made $12.91. So looks like a shipping discount was enacted there. And yeah, pretty pleased with that. This was a Dex New Tags knit chunky black and white cocoon cardigan in a size medium. This was a personal closet item, I think, which never ends up being new with tags, but I guess I didn't wear it. Weird for me, very weird for me. Um, maybe I thrifted it. That sounds like something I might have done. Anyway, it sold for $38, giving us $30 profit, which is fantastic because it was just in my closet. Next was a guest black multi-floral Tomiko jumpsuit in a size medium. This was so cute and substantial, but it was Guess, and you know, Guess's resale value is not quite where it should be. So this would have been a really expensive jumpsuit that resold for only $30, but I was happy to sell it because again, Guess, not the best resale value. So it sold for $30, giving us $23.70, and we're splitting that with our consignment client, the one who gives us all the Guess. Next was a Nua Tags Cavu gray multicolored abs Aztec print uh, puffer vest. So this was a Nua Tags puffer vest. It was printed. I picked it up for that reason. It was $10 at a consignment store. Someone paid us $44 for it on the Canadian closet, giving us $31.08 or our $20 profit. Next was a pair of Rag and Bone suede Madrid double buckle block heel sandals. These sold for $75, giving us $59.25, and we got those at a consignment store for $20, so giving us a $40 profit. Fantastic. That's exactly what I'd expect from Rag and Bone shoes. Next was a brand new Tag Speedo yellow and black swimsuit in a size, I, I called it a size extra small. I think they come in numbers. It's like a really small, small, small size. So, but a new Tag Speedo bathing suit, sold for $29, giving us $22.91, and I believe I paid $5 for this at A Value Village. Next was a Anthropology Seychelles Western floral embroidered cow, like Western, kind of almost cowboy boots, but not quite. Um, tall boots in a size 7. We had to have these forever. No one ever sent an offer on them, which is annoying because they had so many likes and we've relisted them so many times. So I wouldn't pick these up again, although we did only get them for $2. So that was pretty cool. They sold for 28, 
giving us $18.16. I guess we did a shipping discount there. So we made $16 off them. That's pretty good from two, but it took so long to sell. I would not pick that up again. So Seychelles by Anthro takes too long to sell. I'm not into it. Next was a Reed Leather Brown Finsulate Bomber Jacket in a size men's large. This sold for $65, giving us $51.35. And you haven't heard me say this in a while because almost all of her stuff is sold, but this came from my friend's mom, Karen, who gave us a bunch of stuff for free to sell. And that was amazing. And we made a ton of profit on it and we're so grateful for her. And this is one of the last items that came from her. So it's now sold. There's another $50. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, Amber, for being my friend and having a mom. <laughs> and also giving me some of your clothes. Just fantastic. Tell people what you do. Next was a new look black denim long sleeve mini dress in a size 4. I don't remember which $10 bags this came from, but it came from $10 bag. It sold for $20, giving us $15.80. Next was a pair of John Barbados dark wash straight leg jeans in a size men's 31. These sold for $62, giving us $48.98. These were $20 at a consignment store. John Barbados jeans sell fairly reliably, I feel like I can say now, in our closet. Next was a Lauren Ralph Lauren blue cargo shorts in a size 12. These came from a $10 bag, sold for $19 with a shipping discount, giving us $10.89. This, <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is a free people blue denim jacket, crop length, um, size large. This sold to our consignment client. And I was like, what are you doing? Buying things from the closet. I would just give this to you. Ugh. I feel really bad, but she paid for it and like, I'm gonna ship it to her. But yeah, this sold to one of our consignment clients. Um, th that is an irregular occurrence and I don't recommend doing that. But anyway, um, it sold for $57, giving us $41.35 and I paid 30% off of $17. So like $15 for this. So that was a great profit. Thank you, consignment client. You shouldn't be buying from us. That's, yeah, how I feel about that. Next, we're almost done. Oh my God. It was a Patagonia gray and purple nine trails. Which sounds like nine tails if you're a Pokemon fan. <laughs> Ignore me. Sh shorts with a pocket, zippered pocket in the back. These were in a women's medium and they sold for $38. We paid $9 for these at a value village, giving us $30 after the fees or a $21 profit, which is great. Next was a Nike full zip Therma fleece sweater in a size medium. I have been wearing this for a long time now and it's been listed that whole time, but I will now give it up because it's old. A Lily's Closet Anthropology striped high-low shirt that I've had forever and I got at a small little thrift store for $3. And then a Just Living blue and white tie-dye button-down shirt. Um, this was in a size medium. This was from a $10 bag. So all in all, probably had about 10 bucks into this. And it sold for $60, giving us $43.72, or like a $33 profit. And then whatever monetary use you decide I got out of that Nike fleece. And the last thing to sell, it was another Sid Dickens tile. So it was the Sid Dickens... I called some other Sid Dickens tile, the natural itch tile, I think. Or did I not? I don't know. It This one was the natural itch tile. Um, so Sid Dickens, it sold for 144 Canadian dollars this time. So our earnings were 110 Canadian dollars, or just a little bit less than what they sell for. And we'll be splitting that with that same consignment client. Obviously, all these came from this one person. Let's see what collection this was from. 2008 Spring Empire Collection and retired in 2010. So, was happy to have that sale. And yes, now we're done. So, that means we did a total in those eight days of $1,044 on the Canadian closet. When you add that up with the US sales, you get a total of $2,420 on the US closet and plus the Canadian closet from March 16th to 23rd. Um, an eight day period that I'm considering a week because March has too many days. So yeah, 
that's where we're at right now for March. It is the 24th, so I cannot tell you how the rest of the month is going. Um, but let me know how your sales month is going. If it dropped off, let me know in the comments when it dropped off because a lot of people are saying that since Posh changed their algorithm again, that the sales have dropped off. I'm very curious about this phenomenon and would like to know how, like what's happening in your closet. So this is what's been happening in ours. Um, the last like two days have been a little slow, but that's it. So yeah, we, uh, it's not long enough for me to say anything definitively yet. If the sales completely drop off a cliff and we keep listing as much as we have been, that will be, that will be enough for me to say something. But we did make a f like one or two sales today already. So I'm, I'm not super worried about it, but I'm not, not worried about it. So yeah, let me know how your sales are going. And otherwise we will see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, because it makes me so freaking happy. And I have this little button that I can turn this thing off with and I'm very fancy now. So bye-bye.